Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. You know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Welcome to St Mary's this morning as we continue to worship uh, virtually together online and we continue to journey through this season of epiphany. In our readings today, we hear stories of people hearing the voice and the call of God. And so we heed that voice as we gather in our worship today. And we pray that we might know that voice of God more clearly in our own lives. And so we pray, blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you reveal yourself to the world in three wonders. A star leads the wise men to the manger. Alleluia. Jesus is revealed as the Christ in the waters of baptism. Alleluia. The water is made into wine at the wedding feast. Alleluia. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in this season of Epiphany, the light of the world, made incarnate at Bethlehem, is revealed to the nations. Though his dawn breaks upon us, we have not recognized nor understood his light. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and forgive us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Jesus was baptised in the Jordan. Forgive us when we are not obedient to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Jesus changed the water into wine. Forgive us when we fail to recognise the bounty of your love. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, born of Mary, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord unto Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, 
and he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of everyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expedited by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until the morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said. Here I am, Eli said. What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Psalm today is 139, and the response is, I will thank you because I am marvellously made. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. I will well, thank, thank you, because I am marvellously made. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you, because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. I will thank, thank you, because I am marvellously made. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret, and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. I will thank, thank you, because I am marvellously made. How deep I fill your thoughts, O oh God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, there would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, 
my lifespan would need to be like yours. I will I thank, thank you because I am marvellously made. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And God also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever had an experience when you think you know someone pretty well, and then they do or say something that is totally out of character? Or perhaps you hear someone else telling a story about them, and it doesn't sound like the person that you know. Both of these scenarios are examples of how hard it is to fully know other people. There are perhaps some relationships that we have where we know the other person quite well. You know, we can pretty much predict that some things about them, things like what they might order for dinner off the menu, or how they'll act in a certain situation, or even to a certain extent, we, we kind of know what they're thinking. But even then, we still don't know what it's like to walk in their shoes. I wonder if you ever wish you could do that. Just spend a day as another person and experience what life was really like for them. I was sure that someone must have made a film about this kind of thing, and I was right. In fact, I found a list of the 20 best films where people swap bodies. I haven't seen any, but there was one film, Freaky Friday, from the 1970s, that had been remade twice, so I gave the middle version a watch. In the version I watched, a mother and teenage daughter are not seeing eye to eye. And so on the day before the mother is due to get married, they find themselves waking up in each other's bodies. And they're stuck there until they can learn to have real selfless compassion for each other. I won't spoil the plot, but you can imagine the escapades that they get up to. Just imagine if you swap bodies with one of your parents or children and what you'd learn about each other if you did. But even if we got to do that, we would never 
fully experience what life was like for them, because we'd still be thinking like us. In the Freaky Friday movie, they swapped bodies, but they were still themselves in those bodies. So the teen daughter, trapped in her mum's uh, body, cut her hair, had the top of her ear piece pierced, um, and then changed her whole wardrobe. While the mum remained more serious and responsible, even in her daughter's body. So even if we switch lives, we'd still be ourselves. We couldn't fully know what it was like to be the other person. While this kind of knowing is beyond you or I, it's not beyond God. Lord, you have searched me out and known me, says the psalmist. You discern my thoughts from afar. You are acquainted with all my ways. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. I wonder how that makes you feel. It can be a little unnerving, can't it? The idea that God knows our innermost thoughts and feelings is equally compelling and frightening. On the one hand, I suspect that we all value our privacy, so the idea that those things that we don't share with other people are already known by God can feel quite uncomfortable and vulnerable. But on the other hand, we all want to be known, to be understood. There's something very validating about this, especially when someone else listens to our story and takes the time to understand and appreciate us. Brené Brown, an increasingly well-known professor and researcher who studied topics such as courage, vulnerability, shame and empathy, has spent quite a long time researching the topic of belonging. She suggests that we can only ever feel a real sense of belonging when people know the real us. Too often, she says, we try to fit in, and so we adapt ourselves to the people around us. But when we do this, we find ourselves wondering if people would still accept us if they knew the real us. This is why when we share something deep about ourselves with another person, and they receive it well with kindness, and without judgment. It can be a priceless moment, a moment of true connection, belonging, and love. That is how Nathaniel seems to experience Jesus's knowing of him today. In our gospel reading, they have not been introduced, and yet Jesus knows who Nathaniel is, and this mesmerizes Nathaniel. Nathaniel knows that only God could know him without an introduction. And so he exclaims, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. But Jesus goes on to promise Nathaniel that he will see more wonderful things than this. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That all sounds a bit cryptic, doesn't it? To understand what Jesus is saying, we have to go back to the Old Testament, to the story of Jacob's ladder. You may remember the story. Jacob, the youngest twin of Isaac and Rebekah, makes a huge mess of things and runs away because his brother wants to kill him. Exhausted, he lies down in the field with a stone for a pillow and drifts off to sleep. In his sleep, he sees a vision where he, it's usually translated as a ladder, Jacob's ladder, but what he saw was probably more like a huge stoneway, what's called a ziggurat. I'll put an image on your screen. It was the kind of outside stairway that you saw on ancient temples. And so this kind of stairway that Jacob saw 
was the kind that you'd have to climb up in order to reach God's space in the temple. But Jacob isn't in the temple. He's in the middle of nowhere. And he sees this staircase with angels ascending and descending upon it. It shows Jacob that God has come close to him where he is. I've heard it described as being a bit like a heavenly hotspot. You know, a bit like a Wi-Fi hotspot. If you're out and about and you've got a, a smartphone and you've not got much data and you need to use it, you'll be looking for somewhere with Wi-Fi in order to access the internet. And this vision that Jacob has is a bit like he's found a hotspot for God, a place where God has come close to him, even though he behaved so badly that his brother wants to kill him. So back to Jesus and Nathanael. When Jesus tells him that he will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, upon himself, Jesus is saying that he is this hotspot. He is the person in which heaven and earth have met. He is the person through whom God is coming close, even and especially when we make a mess of things. As with all our stories in this season, this epiphany today, this revelation that Jesus is the staircase, the link, the bridge between heaven and earth, comes with an invitation. In fact, there are two invitations in this passage itself. One given by Jesus to Philip as he calls him and says, follow me. And the other one is given by Philip to Nathaniel saying, come and see. Both of these invitations are offered to us. God does not need to swap bodies with us to walk a day in our shoes. He created us and knows us inside and out, our hearts and our heads. But he also wants us to know his heart, his love and his purpose for us. And so in Jesus, he is calling to us, to me and to you. He calls, come and see. Follow me. And so let us affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Eternal God, you are the maker of us all and we are your creation. People formed in your image as individuals, as community, formed and fed and furnished with understanding of who you are and whose we are. As we worship you today, we recognise your calling and your invitation to know you more deeply and to join you in your creative and healing work. We are here because we have heard you speak in us and through others. 
Help us, dear Lord, as your people and your church, to ever respond to you and to your invitation to your grace. We pray for Bishop Christine, all in government, both national and local, that they may make important decisions wisely. We pray for our church and our church family here in Bly. We pray especially for Catherine, our vicar, and Christine, who is a great support to her. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. God of all our moments, of our days and our nights, you speak and you act in the world around us, not only to call all people to you, but also to direct and guide us in the way of healing and wholeness. Awaken us, Lord, to hear what you would say to us. Help us to open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to your presence. Help us to know when it is your voice we are hearing and when it is our prejudices and desires to which we are paying heed. We pray for your word, for all the leaders, that they may also hear the voice of your spirit and act with discernment and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who knows our innermost thoughts and feelings, we pray for all who live in fear through these times, fear of illness, Fear for the health of loved ones. Fear for the loss of work or income. Fear of being overwhelmed by the pressures and needs of this time. Help them and us to hear the voice of your comfort and healing. And plant in all our hearts the seeds of your hope and joy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, who created each person marvellously and wondrously, we pray for those who consider themselves inadequate and those who dismiss, dismiss or avoid your calling in their lives. Give to them a new vision, a vision in which you are their strength and their hope, working in all things to bring good. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those who, in answering your call, must leave the known for the unknown, the oasis for the desert, the comfortable for the uncertain. Grant them courage and steadfast faith, and help us to bravely face changes in our own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray too today, O Lord, for those in want and need, for those of us and of the larger community who suffer in body or in soul. We remember before you Kelly Wynn, Janet Beecroft, Elizabeth Knott, Linda Brown and Sue Mays. We pray also for those who have died recently. Liz Morton, Alan Thurwell, Jean Vincent, and Margaret Turnbull. And those whose years mind falls this week. Richard Owen, Walter Lambert, Janet Alderson, William Dixon, Muriel Joy Rennie, John Dodds, Hannah Ward, Norman Ray, Sheila Crow, Tom Cole, Charles Frederick Med Priest, James William Alderson, John Sharpless, George Barnsley, and Keith Bursey. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light of the shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Loving Father, bless us all with an abundant faith, a fruitful ministry, a joyful life. Bless us and all those who gather in spirit from their own homes to continue the work of Jesus, who came to heal, save and deliver us all. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
celebrate the revelation of Jesus as the Christ who makes all things new. Renew us in him and in our lives make him known, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thy thanks and praise. Summoning God, we thank and praise you, because over and again you call your people to hear your voice and entrust their lives to you. You make a temple of encounter in our bodies and a tent of meeting in the body of your Son. You sing to us through the law and the prophets, and when we close our ears, you speak through a little child. Should we find the voice or timing or place of your vocation too strange to understand, you bid us simply come and see. And so with heaven open and angels and archangels ascending and descending around your throne, we join the song of your eternal glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we look to all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Though we are many, we are one body. 
because we all share a more important bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Worthy is the Lamb to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us in our worship today. We'll be meeting on Tuesday over Zoom uh, for morning prayer, so please do join us for that, and if you need the details, please get in touch with me. Um, I'm taking my post-Christmas break a little late um, this week, so I'm not around for most things, um, and we're not having a, a community gathering uh, again this week, but we will be planning one uh, for shortly, um, uh, virtually over Zoom, to keep us uh, connected with each other. Uh, so I hope you, you stay safe and have a good week this week. Let's pray for God's blessing upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.